Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video so in this video I just wanted to share with you a bit of the things that I was working on or at least one of the projects I've been working on so far in Rust so I've been trying to learn some basic neural network stuff you know artificial intelligence from scratch uh, using a book right and uh, basically that book was actually using Python <laughs> I mean that's that's to be expected right because um, like Python is the most popular for this kind of things um, uh, they were using the NumPy library for the mathematics you know uh, but I wanted to try in my own favorite language and today I'm gonna try to share with you my experience so far now without further ado here's a disclaimer I'm still just started you know in the AI stuff right so something here could be totally wrong you know when it comes to AI and stuff like that so bear with me in that in that case uh, but I'm more focused on what would rust brings you to the table as an AI developer you know uh, compared to let's say Python or other um, languages basically okay so the first thing before you can actually start programming your neural network or whatever is to actually either make your own math library or pick a math library so I feel like it's a waste of time to create a, a math library from scratch unless if it's a learning experience you see but here I'm actually learning how to make a neural network from scratch I'm not learning how to make a math library from scratch so I had to pick one of the math libraries out there um, so we have two main options that I've seen is an algebra and we have in the array now I personally prefer an algebra and in fact by the way an algebra is made by Demforge uh, which is also the creator of uh, Rapier physics engine which is usually used with let's say Bevy uh, game engine which is the new Rust game engine and so on uh, which is a very very good physics library so basically they're <laughs> sorry they're, they're dog food in an algebra right to their physics engine basically which is a great thing <laughs> so yeah alright so an algebra is a linear algebra library written for Rust targeting general purpose linear algebra real-time computer graphics and real-time computer physics so the features is meant to be general purpose low dimensional linear algebra library with an optimized set of tools for computer graphics and physics so I'm not gonna read through this whole thing but you can you know look it up in the documentation and there's a lot of cool stuff right there uh, but we'll see more about this in uh, the actual code uh, later on, right? So that's cool. And there's also in the array. So in the array creates provides an n-dimensional container for general elements and for numerics. In in n-dimensional, we include, for example, one-dimensional rows or columns, two-dimensional matrices, and higher-dimensional arrays. If the array has n dimensions, then an element in the array is accessed by using that many indices. Each dimension is also called an axis, an array base, the n dimensional array type itself, used to implement both the own arrays. Uh, yeah, you got the point. So, this is the closest actually to NumPy's Python library, right? Um, but I prefer, like, it actually gives you n dimension, so it's also generic on the dimension of the tensor, right? So, you could have either a matrix, a vector, or, uh, you know, a 3D matrix if that makes any sense uh, but like it's basically a 3d tensor right or 4d tensor it doesn't matter right so it's generic on the dimension but in um, in, al in algebra though that's not the case really right so you may have an easier time working with in the array uh, but it's uh, from what I've seen so far I to be honest with you I haven't worked with in the array a lot I have worked with in algebra quite some time uh, but so far from what I see is that an algebra is way more powerful um, in terms of performance and in terms of um, you know compiler uh, type like type system and type safety and type checking etc you got the point and also the fact I think in the array is probably using the heap like a vec to store the actual um, uh, you know the actual in the array I don't think you have the possibility to switch to another storage type. There's though the array view, 
but like you can't let's say I guess uh, store that stuff in the stack though I could be wrong but in terms of um, in algebra it's like its generic system is highly advanced you know it's um, you know it's parameterized on the storage it's parameterized on the dimensions of the matrix it's um, parameterized on you know how much rows how much columns etc uh, but you're gonna see in the actual code in a second so let's actually get into the code pretty much so this is what I got um, please if you're an AI guy and you notice something wrong or strange here please let me know in the comment section I'm still learning I, I just started learning actually okay so we have a layer now the first thing that you're gonna notice there's a lot of crazy stuff going on and that's because I decided to use generic programming with this now this could have been way simpler if I didn't decide to use generic programming but I thought it would, would be more fun and it would uh, you know show the rust type system part like you know power even more although it's a little bit more more work and a little bit more complex and confusing um, but yeah so here we got two things in this struct so we have a layer it actually has three generics like you have a T type right and then a size constant of course this is a con constant at compile time uh, so this is the size of the layer I think like how much neurons in the layer and then how much batches um, so batches is like how much you know multiple inputs you want to feed into the um, you know, just the thing. So here we have the weights and we have the biases. So the weights is an S matrix. So here notice that it starts with an S. Uh, but I'm going to explain more about that in a second. So the type of the scalar of the matrix, which is this T right here. In our case, it's also generic. Though if we didn't want it to be generic, it would be something like this. You know, you would just say S matrix F64. Let's say for floating value or for a double. Uh, right and here we have how much rows you see how much rows and how much columns so the size and batches in my case here for the weights for the biases though I've just used an S vector which is also a matrix under the hood this is just an alias type you know um, so the type of the scalar T and how much values in the vector which is size so if we actually uh, control like hold control and press on this we're gonna see the actual life definition of this so this is just an alias of a statically sized column major matrix with R columns and s with R rows and C columns right so as you can see this is just an alias for this thing right here so the actual type is actually a matrix right and then you pass it T and then a const R so this is the dimension of the matrix so if you notice here uh, this matrix thing is like the most generic column major matrix and vector type so it takes T, R, C and S so like the T is the scalar type, R is how much rows and how much columns and the storage so it's generic on the storage so like is it in the heap or is it in the stack or is it just borrowed or what exactly okay <clears throat> okay uh, I mean you could also uh, implement your own storage in fact because like it's just a trait that you can implement and you could then you could use it like it's fine uh, so the dimension here we're actually using this const struct right here to basically mention that this dimension would be static you know it would be known at compile time because it is possible to say that uh, dyn here as a dimension basically meaning dynamic so it would be only known at runtime so that's also a possibility but in this case it's an S matrix so it's gonna be in the stack right uh, so it is sh like basically the backend storage would be an array and of course an array you need to know the bounds or like how big is the array at, at compile time so for sure you do need this RNC like the rows and columns at compile time so here we actually just say const R const C and here array storage and we just pass in the T and R and C again and yeah that's basically it if you want though a D matrix there you go dynamically sized column major matrix so this would be matrix T DYN DYN basically these are dynamic but of course here you actually lose um, you know like the compile time errors of the matrix shape stuff right and the powerful type system right because this is dynamic it would be checked at com uh, sorry at runtime instead of compile time and notice here that this is an actually a vec storage tdyn dyn okay cool 
And let's go back. The other thing is S vector here, and you're gonna notice that an S vector is actually takes only one dimension instead of two. And it also uses the matrix type, though they could have possibly just said S matrix instead. Um, but yeah, so here they said T cos D, and here they said U1. And U1 is basically an alias, another alias for const one, you know. Uh, so this is just like an alias that you could use for one dimension. And then here you got array storage T, D, and one here. So yeah, it's just an alias pretty much. There's also an owned vector, right? And this would be basically uh, on the heap, you know, it would be allocated. Um, but yeah, and other than that, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. So let's go to the next one. Mm, where would I even start? So let me actually go straight to the main function right now, really. So here, notice we're making a layer and we're actually using the default implementation. Um, and here, notice that the type system have already figured out the shape of the layer. <laughs> I mean, sorry, like the parameters of the layer, you know? It already figured out that this particular layer one needs to, to have three neurons with four batches, you see? And it needs to have, and layer two needs to have three by three, you know? So like three uh, neurons like the size of three and three batches and the same thing with layer three you can notice I haven't gave it the type here it just have inferred it itself uh, it's a pretty powerful uh, type system you know so you cannot do some stupid you know shape uh, shape uh, errors uh, when it comes to the math you see of the matrices um, and you don't have to constantly give it the shape it can just infer it from the operations and here notice that I'm using here layer one dot forward, so I'm making a forward pass here through this particular layer. I'm giving it the inputs as a matrix. This is a matrix, um, you know, the matrix, uh, what is it called? Uh, <laughs> macro, right? Here we're passing these values. Since this is a macro, it, ha it do its own stuff, so we can basically define a matrix like this. So you basically, um, separate it by these semicolons and there you go and finally the activation function that you're going to use for this particular forward pass so here we're using RELU which is also generic <laughs> uh, so it's T X mutable T though I used mutable T instead of T because uh, as we're going to see in a second the apply functions actually require this particular signature so I've just gone with it where T is a real and zero and I actually need a to introduce these bounds or to constrain t to these bounds that it needs to be a real type and a zero type of course this comes from the num traits this is the libraries that I'm actually using I'm using an algebra this is the version features random right because I'm using random and of course the random library and then finally the num traits this is for the generic stuff right so like zero is inside num traits as you can see here and also real is inside of num traits so here I'm just dereferencing x and x is equal to x dot max and I'm getting this maximum value of the generic t because t is constrained as real, you know, so real uh, actually uh, includes this max, max function. And then here we have t0 so we can get the zero of that type t and this comes from this particular trait right here. Okay. So that's the RLU, we just pass it there, there you go, and same thing with outputs to uh, layer 2 dot forward outputs, so we use the outputs of the first layer in the second layer as the, as the inputs, right, and again RLU and so on, and same thing with layer 3, and notice that it actually infers and it knows the type of the output of the layer, so here it says that it's a square matrix if 64, 3, right? And same thing here, square matrix of 64, 3, square matrix of 64, 3, which is pretty cool. And actually, if I run this, I just realized that I haven't run this yet. And look at that. This is what we get. We get a matrix of the result so far, okay? So that's great. Now, what is S square matrix? This is actually my own alias right here that I made. What is it? Here, there you go. So an S square matrix is just, it takes one constant n right and it, it is defined as s matrix t and for the rows and the columns both have n n you know uh, so yeah 
linear it's basically a function that does nothing and sigmoid there you go uh, so I constrained it to be real so I can get one one and also exp and there you go pretty cool stuff um, okay so basically now you may ask yourself like how the heck did the type system realize that these are supposed to be these shapes well it have realized from the inputs that I've <laughs> gave here as a matrix to this forward function and how in the world it did that because every single function you know have its own type stuff you know type information right so let's actually go to the to the actual meat of this I guess <laughs> so we have here um, you know a new function where t is a scalar uh, this is you know an algebra scalar so the basic scalar type for all structures of an algebra this does not make an assumption on the algebraic properties of cell we also require it to be zero we require it to be one add a sign and mole sign so here the new function it just you know initialize the this is useful for let's say if you stored the parameters of a layer inside of a file or something and you wanna you know reload it back or let's say you're just testing and you wanna make sure that you have the determinant input you know um, but yeah so here just self weights biases nothing fancy now the forward function takes self reference right and the inputs is an S matrix so it's a statically sized uh, matrix of T size and batches uh, that's the, the rows and the columns the activation functions it's an impl so impl because this is going to be basically a compile time function you know oh well I mean it's going to be known at compile time uh, but anyways impl fn mute because we can mutate right so mutable T and this returns a square matrix T size so here notice that outputs is an O matrix so it's an owned matrix which means that here we will actually allocate some memory uh, so as you can notice here it's an O matrix const size const size now as you can see I haven't actually mentioned the shape here it just told me it just like realized what is the shape gonna be uh, from the type system so inputs right time self dot weights dot transpose then outputs here basically in numpy you would by by the way in numpy you would actually say inputs dot dot product like dot self dot weights dot transpose uh, but in fact since python you know it's kind of flexible so numpy i think basically when you you use a dot product with matrices you just resolve it to a matrix multiplication so that's what i actually done here because dot products wouldn't work for you with matrices it will only work with vectors so here outputs column iter mute now the other thing is that i cannot actually say plus bias uh, it's not support you know with this type system you know this is not dynamic so we just do it manually because there's no actual function in in algebra to do it you know easier I guess so here we're just going through every column uh, mutably in an iterator right and then we zip it with the biases uh, iterator and then for each uh, column in the matrix you know with the coefficient from the bias right or from the biases right uh, we actually add the scalar mutably to the column uh, which is going to be basically coefficients and here of course we're cloning it uh, oopsies because t could actually uh, I mean it's not copy right so anyways outputs apply into now after we've done this we're done with the first part after that we actually apply the activation function there is a apply into function in an algebra which basically returns self with each of its component replaced by the result of a closure if applied on it right so we pass in the activation function and this is by the way why I have actually done fn mute here and yeah I think that was it for this one the next thing is yeah the default I think default implement so here I'm implementing the default trait right so of course the generic stuff where standard here because I'm using the random crate right I need to make sure that the distribution of S matrix T like that standard is actually relying on that right so here T should be real because I need mm, I'm not sure what I needed this for probably from here uh, but I could be wrong 
plus scalar, plus zero, plus a sign, and plus molar sign. So here we actually create a new layer, right? So manually we make we get the weights, so the weights would be rand random. Now instead of actually saying you know S matrix T size T batches random and so on, right? Uh, which is gonna suck, you know. You have to type out the the type, and if it changes, you have to change it again. You could just go ahead, you know, use the trait directly. So the trait name with the function name directly, and it would actually infer the type for you, as you can see here. And then we say times t from 0 0.02. Um, so the thing is, random would actually, in terms of this matrix, in algebra matrix, would actually give values from 0 to 1 for each scalar. Um, but I want it to be in the range, I think, from minus 0 0.01 to 0 0.01. So I've just done the math, just simplified it to times t from 0 0.02. Um, uh, yeah. And then the biases. So it's going to be 0, right? So the bias would be 0. And finally, we add the to the weights, we add the scalar t from minus 0 0.01. So this is the you know the rest of the math to actually uh, you know do the transformation of the range of the function so there you go um, is there anything I'd like to talk about let's see uh, 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 uh. so the step function here I think it's pretty straightforward so if x is greater than and to use the greater than I had to include the partial ord you know, and t0, since I want 0, I include 0 and so on. Nothing really fancy there. Yeah, um, that's pretty much it, I think. So, yeah, that was <laughs> kind of challenging actually because I couldn't find this anywhere. And hopefully, um, you know, this opens up for you something new, I guess. And notice that we I can actually expand this whole type of stuff and see exactly what is going on with everything you see. <laughs> Look at this crazy type. <laughs> right? So that is amazing. Matrix view mutable. So this is a matrix view, meaning that it's just kind of like a reference to a matrix, but yeah. Uh in fact there is a lot of cool stuff when it comes to an algebra, by the way. Uh there is uh, but yeah, let's not make this video more, I guess, more long, li like longer, but please make sure to, to check out the documentation. But yeah, I guess that was it for this video. I just wanted to share with you this, and goodbye everyone. Thanks.